Welcome to Ideas, a time of conversation about all things board games. Community is built on conversations and games are built on ideas. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Welcome to a brand new month. Welcome to some fresh new ideas. One of my favorite times uh, here on the channel, sitting down with designers, illustrators, publishers, talking about how they got their ideas from just being ideas to the games that fill our endless shelving units and sprawl out on our tables. And this month, I have uh, a designer as well as a publisher, I guess I could say, mixed into one, or I guess maybe half of a publishing duo. Um, nonetheless, I have um, Andrew uh, Andrew Nerger. Yes, right? you got it. <laughs> of, um, of our two I games, our Road to Infamy games. How is it going, Andrew? It's going great. Thanks for having me on, Brent. I really appreciate it. No problem. It is my my pleasure. And as mentioned, um, you're from Road to Infamy Games, but it didn't only start R2I. I got to make sure I say that right. But let uh, I just want to, you know, I just want to <laughs> dive it. in here. Um, before, I don't know anything about your play style or the games that you love, but I I, I started this on my last, um, last episode with uh, Keith Ferguson of Santa's workshop. And I asked him, um, out of the six Calyx cubes that you can see around me, if you could only have the games in one of the cubes for the rest of your life, which, which cube would you take? Oh, wow. Um, Ooh, and, and that's tough. And besides canvas, you could say, I'm not a fan of really any of those games. So, <laughs> and, and that no, would be all I right. Would, I would, I think I would do the uh, the drop it cube. You got downforce camel up wingspan, shadows over Camelot. Yeah, that, that's a pretty solid one. But there's there's ones I love in the other ones in your other cubes that I would I'm, I would be sad to miss. <laughs> to be honest, I, if someone asked me that, I I think out of obligation I have to say Everdell because it's my favorite game, and after playing it almost 250 times, it's it's got a, a special spot in my heart, but um, totally let's, understand. Let's go back. Was gaming always a part of your life? Yes, I would say, yeah, very close to always. I um, I got um, an email from one of my aunts who lives in New York now. Um, a couple, a couple years back, when I started doing board game design and publishing for a living, and she said, "Here's the first game you ever made." And it was this, I just, I was, must have been four or five years old. And I drew out a little game board. It was called the head game. And you would, it was Monopoly style, but you would like walk around the face of this person I drew. Um, <laughs> I don't think the rules got beyond any of that, but um, I was always really um, interested in game design, something that I think I've, you know, um, it's been my head all my life. Yeah. So, did you have a favorite game growing up? Like, did you play game with games with your family or with your friends, or what did that look like? Yeah, um, I would say like early years, it it wasn't really big into board games. My at one point, my brother got me into Magic. We were also playing like the Pokemon TCG, so that was pretty interesting. But I was pretty steeped in video games. Mm -hmm. um, Warcraft was a big one for me. Uh, Shogun Total War is like it's like a design concept I'm thinking about lately. So that one's like top of mind of like what I was really enamored with in my mm -hmm. young years. Um, and then I don't know. I have so just my partner, and in high school he was a DM for D and D. He was my DM, and he really got me back into more of the like social board gaming aspects mm -hmm. and um so he he put together like a a live action uh mario party where mm -hmm. we all dressed up and then we played games so like uh i feel like we really um i was so lucky to meet him in high school and uh that really we were able after that to really bounce ideas off e each other we um came back from college and we ended up rooming together. And that's when um, we 
got very obsessive over game design. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Um, and, and that's when, you know, I think, you know, probably like 2011 or 12, he brought some friends over and they just had all these games I'd never heard of. And I was astounded with all of them. First, they brought out Forbidden Island. I was mm -hmm. like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Then they brought out Zombicide. I was like, I've never seen this before. <laughs> and then we ended the night with um, Battlestar Galactica. Mm. And like what what a triple hitter in 2012 to like bring to a game night. Yeah. And after that, I was very enamored with all things board games. I was like, you can do a lot more with this than um, you know, than Monopoly. There's, you know, the sky's the limit. So I think that's where the board game itch really started, was right around then, like right after college. Mm -hmm. So what are you playing these days? Obviously, prototyping and designing and whatnot, but you're still obviously in the hobby and seeing what's out there. Like what, what do you, what do you playing these days? What, what are you really enjoying? Oh man. Um, that's not your own, obviously. Right. Um, Daybreak just came out from mm. CMYK games. That one's got a really good loop. Enjoying that. I recently just picked up, uh, it's it called deep sea. It's that, um, search for, or no, uh, the last planet. It's okay. like a trick taking game. Okay, totally freaking, I'm butchering the name of it. But, like um, I was like the second crew. Yeah, the second crew. There we okay. go. Okay. Yep, the yep. crew deep, whatever. I've yep. been playing that a lot with my wife. Um, that's been really fun. I mean, what a perfect whopper game that is. Hmm. Um, and then yeah, like an old game I always end up returning to because. It's something I can always show uh, friends and family when they're kind of new to the hobby is um, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Mm -hmm. It's like a cooperative card game. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone always digs that. So that I like know if I bring that out, it's an instant hit. So I, I feel like that gets multiple plays every year. Nice. And you know what you said? You used um, the saying, bringing new people into the hobby and stuff. And that kind of dovetails into canvas, which I want to talk about quite a bit because you, um, as well as, uh, Jeff design canvas, uh -huh. right. Yeah. Right. And, um, to a smashing success, uh, I was actually mm -hmm. just going over the Kickstarter page again today. And I was like, man, you guys had a goal of like 14,000 and you got like 700 and change thousand, like crazy. And, I was actually just playing canvas last night with my wife and my son and my daughter. And awesome. I was like, man, this is like, this is like the game that can introduce virtually anybody into the hobby. That's just a casual gamer. And I don't want to say that in like a pejorative way that canvas is just that type of game, but like, it's so welcoming and it's so inviting mm -hmm. because it's like, mm -hmm. you can be like, Hey, do you want to play a game? I don't like it. How about just playing game mode, creating pictures and creating paintings. And you can make that game. I feel you can make canvas like as, as brain burning as you want. Brain burning is not a word, but you know what I mean? You can make it as, as <laughs> yeah. heavy as you oh, want. Oh, totally. And you can play, you can make it, you can make it as, as chill as you want to the point where like I'm playing with my wife. She was like, yeah, sometimes I just play just to make pictures. I don't care. If, I don't care for scoring or anything like that. I don't care to win. I just want to create something fun. And that that's what you have. And so smashing success, obviously. But let's let's dive into Canvas a little bit. When did you guys start designing this game? And um kind of at what point, obviously the seven hundred thousand dollars on Kickstarter kind of like yelled that in your face, but like at what point did you be like, hey, I think uh, I think we have something kind of uh special here, like lightning in a bottle. What what was that whole journey like for you guys? Yeah, so I think the journey was sparked after um we got together and we played uh, Mystic Veil vale with some friends. Okay. It's a card crafting, transparent card game. Mm -hmm. And we had seen it at Gen Con. We were so mystified by the transparent card nature of it. And I, I think before playing it, we had a lot of ideas of, of what it was going to be. And once we played it, it was an awesome game. But um, Jeff and I thought that more could have been done with the transparencies. It's kind of like each tarot size card has three very distinct sections that are squared off. 
Mm. And um, when you put those together, they form, I guess, a complete image, but the image is like just three very disparate things. Mm. It's like, okay, this is how you can take three images that are on different cards. You can put them together and now you have three images on one card. And so I think that really got our um, creative juices flowing for, okay, how could you put these three images together and how could it, how could they all play off of each other and combine to make something different? Mm -hmm. um, and so after that, Jeff was really enamored and worked on a lot of designs with it. Um, and he really was interested in doing like square cards that you would turn and rotate mm -hmm. and like put on top of each other. Mm -hmm. But um, he just couldn't come, come up with something that he liked. So um, we kind of bounced ideas off of each other. And I told him, well, what I would really like is whatever this image is, I don't want it to be abstract. I want it to, in every way possible, be look like a painting. And then and that got my mind going. And that's when, um, you know, like mono directional cards came into play. And, and really quickly, you know, we worked off of each other and we came up with a really simple, hey, the game is about layering cards. Um, players need to pick up cards, but they should do it in the easiest, simplest way possible because it's about layering the cards and the game needs to score. So we need interesting reasons to craft these cards in different ways. Mm -hmm. and, and that really got us going. And I would say that was pretty fast. And then the idea of the what the art was going to be took forever. Mm. It took months. I mean, we tried so many different ideas. We were looking at different styles of art and collage art. And we're going, okay, and how does this come together? And how does this make sense? And, uh, and we're getting pretty frustrated with it because it was so impossible to figure out. But one day I, um, I just typed in, well, what's like, um, I went into BGG, like mm -hmm. board game geek. And yeah. I went like most beautiful board game art. And someone wrote up like a post and number one was Dixit. And they said, Dixit mm -hmm. has the most beautiful art. So I said, okay, I, I ended up, um, kind of copying some of that artwork, putting it into a uh, Photoshop and just playing around with it and being like, is there anything you can do with this? And that's when I realized that it was kind of like the one art style we didn't look at, which was kind of uh, surrealism. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, all the issues we've had with perspectives um, is kind of disappears if we choose a surreal art style where, mm -hmm. you know, a person could be in front of a mountain and look giant or they could be behind it like all sorts of things could pick up. So once we had that, then it was about finding an artist. But that was, I would say the the game design came together very fast. And then it was a much longer process to figure out literally just the transparent layering of the cards. How did you, um, I don't know if you did like a lot on uh, like um, digitally, like TTI, like tabletop simulator, but like, how did you do the play testing? Did you just buy a whole bunch of transparencies and then yeah. cut them, cut them all out? And I'm assuming at that point you weren't actually play testing the top of it. Rather, you were play testing mechanically on all the swatches and and balancing those that must have been. Like, hey, we need to have this amount of red and this amount of blue and this amount of yellow, green, and purple with these many low or these many like images. Like, like how did how did you play test that? Yeah. So the very earliest versions, we did exactly what you said, which is we only worried about the bottom part of the cards where the game was happening. Mm -hmm. So, which is like a tray. Um, so we printed that off on paper and we painstakingly um cut out every um, every swatch. There's five swatches, uh, mm -hmm. swatch positions in canvas, and each card has two. So where the two swatches existed, we left it alone, and everywhere else, we had to hand cut every single card. Then when you would layer the, so those cards on top of each other, you could see the icons. But still, we didn't have artwork. Mm -hmm. Then, Jeff, who's a crazy guy, wanted proof of concept for the art. So he printed cards off that had art on just like normal printer sheet paper. 
And then he took an X-Acto knife and he cut them out and like edged them out and got three cards together just so he could put them together and say, hey, look, when these three cards are layered on top of each other, this looks like something. It's not, this isn't a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. um, then later, <laughs> and I think we could have arrived to this part faster, but you can buy um, transparencies for a printer, an inkjet or a laser printer. Okay. So eventually we just went online, printed those off. Um, I had an inkjet and, and so I was, I was able to make a bunch of cards. Though the issue was like when you print on a transparency, the ink is still transparent. And for our needs, we needed wherever that, that color was, that image was, we needed it to be opaque. Like you can't see through it. Mm -hmm. So then I bought some white paint and I painted the back of every single card. Wow. So that was no <laughs> so that was <laughs> opaque like it needed to be. And then we played with that set for a while. Wow. Um, because yeah, we weren't sure how to do it on in a digital format. Mm -hmm. Um now now we do, and so it's a lot easier to design canvas type stuff and transparent card games. But back in the day, yeah, we did it, I don't know, the hardest way possible is like the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> so as as the designer and the publisher as well, how did you know when Canvas was done? And I'm asking right, that right. I'm asking that in the sense of often and, and and correct me if I'm wrong here, but on the outside looking in, often when you're a designer, you go to the publisher and they're like, okay, this game's good. And they, in a sense, tell you often maybe when the game is done, whether that's because a timeline, whether that's manufacturing, whether that's like lots of logistics, they have, you know, in-house game development. So then they will take over and this, that, but you're a designer as well as a publisher. So at what point were you like, you know what, this is good. Let's not like meddle with it anymore. It's good. How, how do you, how do you know that? Yeah. I will how say, did you? I don't know if we knew it. So okay. one of our, we had been doing campaigns for a while. We started with our first game, Road to Infamy. It raised, mm -hmm. I don't know, like $10,000 maybe. It had like 300 backers. And that's when we got the Kickstarter bug and we kept making games. Mm -hmm. Eventually we made Crypt, mm -hmm. which was our first kind of like little success. We got like 10,000 backers. We made a small box game. And after that campaign, we said, all right, we are, people want small box games. We're small box, we're a small box publisher. Everything we do will be in a small box. And so we, the game after that was a small box game. It was called After Nova. It was like a trading negotiation game, kind mm -hmm. of. And I was so sure that that was going to be another giant hit. And mm. it, it didn't do well. Mm. So oh, I was back to the drawing board and I was like, I don't know if I do understand what people want. Yeah. Um, and then we made Canvas and I was like, I think this is really special, but oh my God, I don't trust that I actually know what the <laughs> heck I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but when we thought it was done on like more of a holistic level is um, I think just stuff that Jeff and I noticed that get we get irked about during play tests, that stuff disappeared. Um, and we realized that we were um, more interested in tweaking the values on different scoring objectives. And we weren't uh, having these other bigger conversations. Like a big one for us was earlier was like, how does, when does the game end? Mm. Mm -hmm. That was that was really difficult because people were completing paint, paintings at different times. Does everyone complete the same number of paintings? There was all sorts of questions. So um, at that point, we're like, we know we have to solve that, but the game's not ready until that's done. Um, we do move pretty quickly. So the other piece that probably took the longest was... Um, just getting all the artwork done because it is a, it was a lot of artwork and it was an art style that was really hard to explain to an illustrator. Mm -hmm. It was just like, we're making a game. 
And they're like, okay, so background, foreground. We're like, no, we don't need any of that artwork. We just need this artwork. And yeah, so but we found a great, just a perfect match in, in Luan Win. He his artwork was incredible. Mm -hmm. Um and he he got the concept. He he wasn't the first person, he was like the third or fourth person we reached out to. So we were like, oh man, we don't know if we can ever like find someone who'll understand this concept, but he really did and he brought it through. Um yeah, so I don't know. I and nowadays I'm kind of still like that. I'm like, I I get really excited about this stuff we're working on, but I I just <laughs> I just don't know anymore. Just like, I'm not going to pretend like I think we have a hit on our hands. Oh, here we go. The moment when I knew it was going to be a hit, we made a GIF. We made a GIF just showing the cards sliding in and out, just the different paintings you could make. We yeah. posted that to like Facebook, and suddenly we were just getting tons of traffic, just insane amounts of traffic. Everybody wanted to know, what was this game? What is this? That was when I knew I was like, okay. The general public feels the same way I do about the concept. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to go really well. But we also, I had no idea it was going to get as big as it did. And it got, because it got crazy big. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like it's such, it's such a clean design. And it's just, it's just a game that like, I guess the, the third um, finishing touches expansion kind of, kind of in a sense shows this where it has like you just get to display what you created you know what i mean like it's every time i played this game it's like okay players like okay i'm making a painting and this is what it is and you say what it is and then you show everybody like this game is like a giant version of like show and tell and then you know the points that they matter obviously because you will have a winner but it's kind of like that experience where everybody's just enjoying a chill time and you're creating paintings right like like the theme is just so relaxing and i i spoke to it earlier how this game is just welcoming and can play in many different ages and you can play as heavy as you want and you can just sit there like oh man i really need inspiration tokens so that i can get that one specific one because then i'll get all you know what i mean i'll score three out of the four objectives and i'll get a you know bonus on the the silver medals and like you can do all that but you can just chill and and it's so captivating showing new players be like yeah you like games yeah i play monopoly well how about this i got cards that you stack on top of each other and you're you're a painter you know like it is kind of mind-boggling so i can see how people kind of went nuts when they saw that that uh the thing you posted where it's just layering these cards and what are you creating and yeah fascinating and so I, I spoke on finishing touches reflections i think that's amazing um i would dive into that a little bit more but i want to talk about your final i guess it's a, you, maybe it's not the final one but you've been talking about a brand new kickstarter with i don't even know what you want to call it like an art box or a canvas art box or like what are you guys working on yeah it's a it's our canvas big box um kind of reminiscent of like a terraforming mars big box or like um wingspan has a nesting box Thank it's you. just a really nice place to store all the stuff because after three campaigns there's just so much stuff mm -hmm. and um we wanted it was the game was getting it has a lot of stuff in it mm -hmm. and we want people to use it and i think it happens with a lot of people with games they love it's like sometimes you know, as you get another expansion, the setup and teardown for the game kind of keeps, yeah, it keeps uh, going up. So we're like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're like, let's pull out Everdell with all the expansions, you're like, it's going to take 30 minutes. You know, it's going to take a little moment to set everything up. Mm -hmm. So um, with the big box, what we wanted to do is have a one, a, a box that holds everything. Mm -hmm. And then B, it's all organized in such a way that you can just, it's, it's really a box of drawers. Mm -hmm. So by just pulling out all the drawers, you set up the game. Mm. And it's ready to go on the table. And then when you're done, you just put the stuff back in the little boxes and they go right back into the, the or in the drawers and they go back into the box. So um, we're really excited about that. We'll be having, uh, I think, uh, 
a mini expansion or some new art cards. So that will be on the way. Mm -hmm. um, but we really just wanted to wrap everything up. And, um, and what we also really love about it is people love hanging their game boxes on the wall. And we're like, you can just leave them on the wall now. Mm. Like that's just art forever for you. Yeah. And then when you're, you know, uh, need to what? go travel, carry something around, it's all in one box. It's super easy to set up, tear down, um, and keep on the shelf. Uh, so it kind of, it just, it feels like such a perfect um, kind of ending to everything. A, fin a finishing kind of like note. Yeah. Yeah. A finishing note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right on. So as we get near near to the end here, man, time flies by. Um, so will that box kind of be, it'll be a big box, but it won't be overly big, I would imagine, because you can kind of have every everything in a big box, but not really. Like I have reflections and the base game and all intents and purposes, I could put everything in one box, right? I really uh, could. Almost. With, yeah, I, I, it, it would be a... It, it it would be tight because the reflections it has that tight. board and yeah. and this and that right so it, it would be tight but i'm assuming the big box isn't going to be like obviously not going to be the size of like a nesting box but no. it'll still be a reasonably a reasonably sized box i'd imagine it, yeah it could be called the average size box but it just wasn't it wasn't uh as exciting that way but yeah it's <laughs> you know it's it's probably going to be a little bit smaller than a ticket to ride box. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're right. Um, I mean, what's really nice about each canvas we designed, we said, here's the square dimensions, put as much stuff into it as possible. So really when you're packing away a canvas or you're packing away reflections or you're packing away finishing touches, there's basically no room left mm. for anything. It's like, it is wall to wall in there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just, it gives it a little bit of breathing room, which I think is nice. And, um, and yeah, I think, you know, I'm excited to get my hands on the finished one too, because mm -hmm. I know I I'll be pulling that thing out all the time when I, when I know I could have it ready on the table in five minutes. Like yeah. that's when Jeff and I design, we're saying, we're thinking about, all right, minimal setup time. And we're saying maximum fun and strategy. And then just like you were alluding to earlier with like, hey, canvas is for everyone. You can think about or you can just make a fun um, painting. That that was a design goal for us. Mm -hmm. It almost stemmed from, I would say, like a Cards Against Humanity where people feel a certain way about it. But the experience of getting, having just a great time with your friends and almost not caring about the winner because mm. what you're building or crafting is is the fun part yep. is what we were looking for. I was like, you can't if if the only time you're having fun with the game is when you're winning, I'm like, uh, that that's tough. But if mm -hmm. you can say, I just want to do this whether I win or not, and and create something that you can show people and also say, like, hey, I bet you basically no one in the world's made this because it's there's a bajillion combinations like that's something mm -hmm. really special mm -hmm. um and that worried you know we're going to uh we're working on another game and we're going to try and create that same feel again right on well as we wrap up if uh if if others want to and i highly recommend checking out canvas if you haven't played it um or um just the work that you guys are doing are are a two eye or road temperature games. If people want to see more of your work and whatnot, or, you know, follow along on the, the upcoming Kickstarter or whatever, how can people get a, in contact with you or social media? And that? that's what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you can, they can head to our two I games.com. That's just the letter R the number two I games.com. They can also, um, has hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. We are at R2I Games. And if you are interested in learning more about the big box or Canvas, if it's new to you, just type into Google uh, Canvas Big Box Kickstarter and it will be the first link. And you can uh, click on that and get notified for when that campaign launches and see all the stuff we have to offer. Right on. I highly suggest checking it out. Canvas, fantastic game. And uh, I'll put, um, you know, all that 
stuff that Andrew just said in the description of this video. So you can check it out there. And you know, what? I truly believe that community is built on conversation. Um, just like games, they're built on ideas. And um, I just want to say thank you to Andrew for taking the time to share your ideas. And I'm excited to see and hear what else you and uh, Jeff have in, uh, in mind um, down the road, <laughs> whether it be this final big box for Canvas or these new games that uh, you kind of talked about. So thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. No problem. And so, like I said, check out um, Road to Infamy and their stuff. Check us out on Facebook, Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Till next time, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples.